Hey everybody, today is April 26th and this is the weekly KCP community meeting. Thank you all for joining. And um, as I mentioned before I started recording, if you do have an agenda item, please feel free to add it to the uh, issue here. And uh, Stefan, if it's okay with you, can we come back to your issue uh, or to your item and go on to the other ones first? Yeah, yeah as usual, that's the last one. Yep. Okay. So, Paul, you have the first comment here. Yeah, with uh, uh, Steve's work on, on Cockroach, and he's getting ready for some uh, proposals and discussing it with upstream SIGs, I was curious, are there other pieces that we know about that we should be discussing with SIGs, and do we have them enumerated so that we can keep track and not lose sight of them? That's a good question. Um, so I had approached some folks in API machinery about the fundamental concepts that we're doing in KCP to change things related to API machinery to enable multiple workspaces and um, and scoping of, of clients and listers and whatnot. I don't know that there's much um, desire to from the API machinery folks probably to get those in, but I do think that there are some changes that um, some of our, our folks are working on to help enable some of these features that like they're minor changes to things like shared informers that um, I think are, are worth bringing to the attention of the six because they are changes we would like to get merged upstream. Um, so that, that comes to mind. It's, it's kind of small and targeted. It's not nearly as big as something like Cockroach, but I think it's worth chatting about. And same for things like would SIG scheduling be interested in location? Maybe not, but they might have insight on what they've thought about in the past and why it did or didn't work. So I'm curious, we don't have to try and list them all out here, but would a label or something on an issue help us identify these items and make sure we don't uh, drop them or at least help us make sure we're talking to the folks who have interest? Um. Yeah, so I, I maybe maybe a label. I mean, I, I don't know if we're if we do a good job of of housekeeping uh, and putting those labels on. Uh, before I forget, one thing that uh, a friend of mine who works on SIG multi cluster reached out a few weeks ago and asked if we could come and present to the SIG just about KCP in general. So, um, if anybody is interested in trying to put something together or reuse some existing material that we have, um, I'm sure we could get on their calendar sometime. Any other thoughts on Paul's topic? All right, well, if, um, if we think an issue is uh, something we want to do, you know, Paul, feel free to, to add one or ask one of us to do it. Um, and if you all have things that you're working on that are worth upstreaming or discussing with the community SIGs, um, I'd say you can follow up async uh, in Slack or wherever. Does that sound good, Paul? Yeah, sounds good. OK, uh, thank you. So next up, we've got a demo. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing this, so I will stop presenting. Go ahead, Antonio. Uh, can I present? Let me see how can I do. I hope so. <laughs> I don't think I did anything to prevent you from doing it. Yeah, let me check. Uh, so I don't know what I'm doing. Yep, we can see that. Okay, this 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 is the slide I want to present today. Mm -hmm. I don't know what. Okay, I think that I don't know how to zoom this. Uh, Do you want the slideshow? Yeah. What is under that? the view? Okay. Or that. There you go. Okay, but that's that's to 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 give some context because that's the requirement that I understood that we have in KCP. So, uh, you see the graph. 
we are going to have external clients in the middle we have this this green symbol that is the kcp server and we are going to have a uh, private clusters on the right side so the, the what i understood is that the client is going to have a service account that goes against kcp and for, and for some specific calls like qctl exec for exec on a pod or get the logs of a pod or something we want to to forward this request to the private cluster and use the service account of the private cluster not the service account that the client is using so for doing that what i was trying different options and and um different approaches but the the thing that worked best and with a minimum pulling the minimum dependencies was to create two reverse proxies over a reverse connection so the uh, for the people uh, i know andy and other people in the k machine they use this a lot so they know more than me the the standard library implement a reverse proxy uh, library that is very simple to use you just keep install a handler in the server and reverse proxy to the to the backend that you want and if this worked perfectly for not only for normal requests it worked for web sockets and it worked for the speedy why i'm saying this because the tricky thing here is to to do the qctl exec and the qctl for forward that use speedy so we need to upgrade the connection and reverse proceed reverse proceed this connection to get the the pod so with this reverse proxies we solve the problem of of the different api calls using the speedy then we have the problem that the client the syncer in in the private cluster is the one that has to initiate the connection and we need to be able to use a connection between these reverse proxies so there are different approaches that can be used one is, is to create a tcp connection or a grpc tunnel uh, or use web sockets the thing that i didn't like from those approaches is that for example for web sockets uh, multiplexing over web sockets i didn't find anything any library mature enough that allows multiplexing and for scaling this solution we are going to need uh, multiple reverse connections with grpc seem it, uh, it seemed the best candidate because grpc already implements uh, uh, streaming in by default but what's the problem is that for grpc you need another endpoint because despite it use http2 uh, using in using it in the same server as the http2 in golan is experimental and it has reported issues of bad performance so what i did is i created a, a small uh, library to create reverse connections over http stream, streams that i i wanted to use this too because that means that if this work well we can also implement in kubernetes upstream moving away from spd and moving to http2 streams and solving all the problems in one shot but that's the long shot and so conceptually the the implementation is like this to have a component that dials an http connection to kcp then uh, it establishes a control plane connection and when when a client connects to to a url a special url in kcp like the ones that you can see as cluster one slash box it reverse proxy that connection through the reverse connection to the other reverse proxy and get to the api server it's a bit complex to explain but this i think that is simple to to see so for the demo what i did is i have an instance in 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 google cloud this this is the instance in google cloud and in google cloud i create a server that this will be like the 
KCP server. So the KCP server should be this one. And this, this, the, um, this is called uh, the, the, on the bottom of the screen, the one that says reverse port is, is the sinker. So when I run the sinker, this will be a port against the URL of the KCP. I provide a queue config on my local cluster. This is running in my laptop, by the way. So this is where it's running in KCP. This is my laptop. And I have a kind cluster running here that is going to, to break the, the cluster, okay? So when I run this, this reverse pod, it's going to connect to the, to the server on, on KCP. What it's doing right now is establishing a connection and a control plane connection. Uh, what indicates so that the server knows that it has a client attached and if it receives a connection, it sends a request to create a reverse connection and it forwards the, the, the it uses us to proxy the, the request from the client. So to use this, what I have is uh, we can send request directly. So what I'm going to do is use the kubectl directly and what I'm going to do is, is to, to use a special URL. It's, if you see, this is the, this should be the base, the 32.205.50.34. This should be the base URL. And this slash proxy out here, 001, is the, the, the ID of my reverse port. You can see below that I'm, I'm calling the KCP with this ID. That means that when I receive a request on that URL, I'm going to forward through this reverse connection. So I can do the oops. The first time it always takes a lot because it has to do this, the discovery. And you can see that you have the get pods, uh, all the uh, requests will work. This is very simple because it's just a get and you only send traffic and receive. The trick is one is when you do the exit because this has to create a connection to a speedy and then attach all the connection through this robust proxy and forward to the client. So the name of the pod is test and and you can see I'm inside the in the in the pod. The other important thing with this approach that didn't work at the beginning is to handle concurrency because uh, you need to be able to create reverse connections on demand. That's why I say why I started with living with that the web sockets without multiplexing wasn't useful because you are going to need to multiplex. If we want to handle 100 clients to one P cluster, we need to have 100 reverse connections. So if I do the same, uh, let me copy the command so you can see. That I can have to uh, see that I'm not faking the demo, <laughs> and and it's working. So we can have multiple connections. That that problem is solved. We can have concurrent connections. The other trick is seen that we want to work is for forward. So now. The, the, this pod is an HTTP server. What I'm going to do is to forward my local port 1899 to the port on the pod. So this is a bug that I have. So the problem is here. You can see that sometimes the the body is uh, receive any uh, any return to It's a known issue. If I uh, it eventually goes away, I think that I have a race in some place with the robust connection logic. So what I'm doing is the port forward, okay? So if now I pull the local port eighteen ninety nine, I have the connection forwarding forwarded to the port, and I want this is the demo. Is uh, we have a solution that is able to 
forward URLs to to, to forward all the kubectl commands to the big clusters using reverse connecting. That was awesome. Um, do I'm assuming that the logs command works too, since you're just forwarding everything. Yeah, the, um, one second. The logs. What the logs and the class. Uh, but this, this is the first thing that I hit. When I created two logs test slash f, <laughs> it didn't work. Not because the, that is what I realized. I mean, people should be using multiple connectors at the same time. And I, I don't know if you have another command. The, the trickiest one was the, the, the speedy one, because you need to hijack the connector. And that's the, that's the thing that was uh, tricky because for that uh, the the I the implementation of the connection has to so the goal and standard library that's some tricky thing is you know that the read a read uh, call is blocking but uh, you need to make they have a, a special command but just to set the line on the past it unblocks the the read call. And you need to implement that logic. So when you want to create a fake connection and you want to make it hijackable, I don't know if that word even exists, that is able to hijack the connection, you need to implement that the connection is able to preempt on risk. And then it's how it works. If you see the code, let me check. Uh, with that, with that, the the nicest thing here is that you can see. You, you don't need practically anything that is not in the standard library. Nice, very nice. Um, Stefan, you've got your hand up. Go ahead, please. Yeah, also very cool. Um, for the next steps, we should talk about how we want to integrate that. Like, this looks like the step to some KCP or QCuttle KCP command would be easy. Like, we would basically have another virtual workspace, which proxies using your your reverse proxies to the sinker um, we should just get uh, sketch it out what what is the goal for p5 to get something in kcp like this is all it's a feasibility study right that's what my understanding so we have the tool like we have the, the, the library to do all of what we want and now we want to integrate it and make a user story out of that right that's something we have to talk about the, the way that they implemented is based on URL, so you can route, so you can have a handler. Uh, and if you know, you don't need to modify QCTL if you know the... the... Yeah, yeah, and this that's what I say, this URL will basically be like a virtual workspace. It's virtual because it's not a cluster workspace, but it's it's a real cluster. So we have to think about how to offer that, that to the user at the end. I mean, you will not say minus minus server. You need some command, so you have to think about maybe KCP pods or something like that, and then you should do those things you, you did here in the example in the demo. It's not not for now, but we should sketch it out. What what uh, is a good next simple step? I mean, it's it's routing URLs. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Why don't we take that offline and and we can work on that async? But um very very cool demo antonio thank you for all the hard work getting this um to a state where you can show it off i'm really excited thank you. okay let me reshare my window here Okay, um, that was the end of the agenda, other than the standing topics that Stefan added. So does anybody else have anything you would like to ask, discuss, debate, et cetera, before we go into the new issues and the 0 0.4 milestone? Anything is uh, fair game. There, there's no uh, bad questions. So if anybody's got anything, please let me know. I've been hearing a lot of questions about controller patterns and things like that. So I was curious uh, how the folks working on controller items 
are doing in the zero four work? Yes, that was uh, something I wanted to check up with Nick and Varsha and Fabian. Um, do you all have any updates you can provide to put you on the spot here? If anybody's talking. Oh, uh, that was me, yeah? <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Um, so we've got um, open PR right now against the new KCP dev client gen repo um, with some client, ge client set generators. I think that one's waiting for review. Um, I've taken the changes to informer gen that we made in upstream cube and, and brought them into KCP. Um, so there's an open PR against um, the KCP dev Kubernetes fork with the informer gen cha changes. Um, there's an open PR against an API machinery that's pulling in that, that round tripper um, that you were, Andy, with some changes to make it work with the new electrical cluster stuff. Um, I think that one's been reviewed. Um, I've responded to that. And uh, we're in the process of getting the informer and lister uh, gen um, scaffolds up. Uh, we're waiting to, to hook all of that into the actual generator code until we see the review that we get on the client set generator, just to make sure that we're not making all the same changes to, to everything. So we're just getting that stuff templatized. And then once the uh, code review comes in on, on the client set generators, then we should be able to hook it all up pretty quickly. Cool. Thank you for the update. Um, I will say for for me, I am finding myself a bit swamped right now and um, trying to get pull request reviews in is difficult at the moment. So if you want to err on the side of doing things, please feel free to proceed with um, the code on the other generators if you're willing to. Uh, if you really want to wait for reviews on the first one, that's acceptable too. Just be aware that, at least for me, I don't have a bunch of spare time today. Uh, I should have more tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, we're still we're still scaffolding everything out, so it's not like we're hard stopped on that. It's just ideally we we do that if we get to the point where we have no more work to do, then we'll just start working on on the code generators. Okay, um, yeah, I have a PR of my own that I need to clean up, and I have multiple PRs I need to review. So I will try to get to everything as quickly as I can. And if anybody else is interested, um, you don't have to be one of a select few to do reviews on any of our code. So um, please feel Especially free. Especially not on my PRs. Uh, yeah, on the PRs, we welcome everybody to participate. So um, if you want to take a look at stuff, um, the ones, actually, I don't know if you have. Yeah, you're not in here. Um, you're in a different repo. We'll get the links uh, added to the agenda for review. Um, but. Anything in here, we would really, really appreciate folks. If you have spare time and you want to review, please um, don't feel like if you're a first time contributor that you need to stay away. Um, we, we would love the contributions and the help. All right. Um, I'm going to move on to incoming issues. If anybody thinks of anything you want to chat about, please uh, let me know. So it looks like we've got a few here. I'm going to start on the bottom. So I filed this issue after a discussion with Stefan um, a month ago about having one cube config and needing to split it up. Um, this does not currently have a milestone because I had cleared it so that we would look at it again. Um, I still think we want to do this, right, Stefan? I think so. Um, I'm going to put this in TBD to try and go with uh, not aggressively pulling things into milestones. We are going to most likely start 0 0.5 planning next week. So anything that's not in 0 0.5 is fair game for being added, but we're going to try to be um, much more thoughtful around what we put into a milestone rather than just dumping a whole bunch of things and then kicking them out later. This one was filed a month ago. And I, I think the conversation was like, maybe this is OK, maybe not. Um, did Antonio or Stefan, either of you ever get a chance to uh, 
figure out if this is actually a problem. I don't remember that. I think the conclusion was that it works, but can you go to the top? It was about user agents, which I think we use now in many places. We we do, but we're not like we're not redoing a we're not doing this where you pass in a client. I don't think. So maybe this just needs one more look and for yeah, somebody to, to figure out if this is something we need to fix or not. The, 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 I mean, pro the problem with this is when when the transport is not catchable or you know, because the rest client has a, an internal cache for all the transport. And if you use a proxy, you use a custom, I don't remember now the details, it's going to generate one connection per each uh, person, per each group that you declare that. So I don't know if this is for TCP a problem or not, but in Kubernetes, it, it was a, a big problem. And it is. So are you saying that with a proxy, we can't ever fix this or? No, no, no. What well, the thing is, when you have some configuration in your REST client that use a custom, uh, what's in the proxy? Or not? Use some a, a custom diary or a custom yeah. some custom things that are not catchable by the internal cache. Uh, you are going to have one connecting per per cache if you don't share the cache. Okay, so you're saying we need to share the client. I, I mean, it's the most optimal thing because if you are, you use HTTP two, you you use the streams. And... Yeah, so I'm going to put help wanted on here to see if somebody um, looking for someone to test and validate if this is still something we need to fix or if we're already sharing the underlying. And I'm going to put this in PBD. All right, next is one that Kyle created about not recreating the admin token. I'm pretty sure that this is fixed. Um, at least the in my usage of it, when I stop and restart KCP locally, I, I keep the same uh, token, I think. So Kyle, do you, are you here? There you are. Uh, do you want to come back to this and just see if, um, and, and follow up and either close it or add more issue, uh, more content, context? Yeah, yeah, I can do that. I've honestly sort of, it's not coming to mind quickly exactly what this was. So I just need to go back and review it. Uh, well, this was, um, we, I know on, so like we, we run a, a a managed instance of KC internally. And I know in that instance, we were not um, preserving the .kcp directory. And so we were losing the um, root token. It was getting regenerated every time we restarted the service because we'd restart a pod, we'd get a new KCP directory. Um, and so that we've solved, but that was like a deployment issue, not a coding issue. So um, we just need to make sure that uh basically the admin token doesn't um get regenerated when you stop and start the um start kcp and i, I think this has been fixed but i'm just going to ask you please review to see if we can close this okay yeah sounds good okay um this one uh, Stefan, I think you clarified this in a, a private Slack message to me, and I don't recall what you had said. I think this was around um, the. Uh, yeah, it was like about so when you, when you configure SSO and you use an arbitrary field which looks like being unique, and the question is, when you when you plan for different SSOs. Um, users might have uh, 
other polls, rules, uh, which reference a username, which comes from the first SSO, but now you have maybe a second SSO configured for a different organization, and then you have overlaps, potentially. Like the, the, the second organization can maybe hijack permissions that somebody got to the first SSO because there's no distinction. So we, if, if we want something like multiple SSOs, we might have to make them unique, like have prefixes in username, something like that in the authentication stack. How, how would we configure multiple SSOs? Is that something you'd stick in a front proxy? Or does... KCP yeah, either that or we, we just build something in KCP. But the, the point is, I mean, in the moment we, we start with just one SSO um, and people build other rules on top of that, we are stuck in this world. Like, we can never make those names. I mean, we can make new names unique again, but the names change. So the step from from arbitrary usernames to something like SSO ID colon username, this step will be hard. Anyway, it's something to think about. Um, everybody interested in all if multiple SSOs should become a thing, then we should better think early about that rather than trying to make a big shift to unique names at some point. Uh, I name that happens to be identical coming from SSO2, something like that. All right, I'm going to put this in DVD. Um, different ways. So we have, we use Builda to build KCP image and we use code to build the sinker image. Um, I think long term we should unify. I'm going to put help wanted this one, but Priority wise, it's not pressing. Um, okay, this one has a PR that is open. Do we? I know this had gotten some review, and Stefan, you approved it, although it needs a rebase. Uh, So since this is basically ready to go, I'm going to put it in 0 0.4. OK. And the last one is that if you run the KCP workload sync command multiple times, it fails every subsequent time. I do think it would be nice to either split this into well, I, I do think it would be nice to be able to run this multiple times, especially if you want to reconfigure what resources you're planning on syncing. Um, I, I know Maru is, has left the project uh, to go on to other pastures, but uh, his last comment that I remember on this was that he wasn't necessarily expecting to make it idempotent initially, but um, if anybody's got strong feelings, I think it should be something you could run multiple times. So I, I renamed the command to workload sync before it was ensure synker or something, which sounds even more item potent. So. Yeah. All right. Well, I think this is like a good first issue and help wanted. And uh, this is the sort of thing I would tend to put into 0 0.5 coming up in the next milestone, because I think it's important. But I am going to put it in TBD. So. Uh, we stick with the plans of actually doing milestone planning. <laughs> um, so that's it for uh, new issues since March 8th, where we haven't been updating that. Um, we do have 33 open that are not, let's see, not community meeting, 32. Uh, so at some point, we should go back through these. Um, it's probably worth having a separate uh, issue scrub meeting rather than using this one. Uh, was there anything else? Oh, we got that. Okay. Um, any last minute topics from anybody? Okay. Well, 
thank you, everybody. Happy Tuesday, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. See you.